They've looked good indeed. The pace of the game, their ability to carry across the vantage line, just too much for Canada to cope with. But well done, Canada. They have a positive attitude, and right on half time, they got some reward. 37 points to eight, half time in Wellington. Forty-five points scored in the first half here in Wellington, most of them by the All Blacks. Six tries to one with Zach Guilford, a hat-trick in the first half, and a nice try right on half-time by Connor Trainer for the Canadians. So 37 points to eight. Difficult day for the goal kickers. Colin Slade with just two conversions from six and a penalty goal so far. Well, oh, very quiet dressing room for Canada. A chat being done. Their territory's in their favour. Possession is too. Had to make a lot of tackles. They've missed a lot too. One of the big problems for them is they're giving the advantage line away too easily to the All Blacks, and I'm sure that's something that the coaching staff will be trying to address at half time. Well, I look now at the highlights, and they've been fairly uh, plenty of them. The first one after a clean break by Colin Slade, and then a beautiful pass. Yeah, great pass with width and the win, not easy. Guilford finished yes. off nicely. So that was the first of the tries. Then the All Black scrum, totally dominant. And watch Kieran Reid snap it up. Quick pass to Victor Vito. And he gets his first test try. And uh, the All Blacks just kept them coming. Yeah, width on the ball here. So block the Canadian defence in close. A wrap around by Dag on Guildford, who drew two defenders in. Finished off nicely by Dag. Zach Guildford had one. And he's going to get another one here. There's a nifty little kick, but not great defending here by the Canadians. It was uh, Connor Trainer who couldn't control it. Guildford got his second. Nice. And here's the, the next try. The Guildford lines Molina. Quick tap by Jimmy Cowan. And Guildford in space lines Molina up for a try in his 99th test. And the All Blacks ran this one out. A beautiful kicker from Sonny Bill Williams. He has a quick look across. And then a lovely kick which sits up for Molina. And then Guildford, once he saw clear space between him and the try line, he was off. He got uh, three, but then right on half-time, Canada got a try. Yeah, Connor Trainer, good. Stable enough scrum by Canada. The All Blacks couldn't regroup on the blind side defensively. Numbers advantage, which Canada exploited well. So 37 points to eight at half-time. The All Blacks over Canada. Half-time break here at the Wellington Regional Stadium. 37 points to eight. The All Blacks leading. Canadian coach, former All Black, Kieran Crowley, is with Ian Smith. Well, Kieran, a nice positive note to finish the first half. What have you, you told your boys? Um, yeah, we've got to get our defence structure right. You know, we're just leaking too much. Um, the inside channel has beaten us a couple of times. Um, you know, the pass back in. We're a little bit like deer in bloody headlights at the moment. It's, you know, it's, um, yeah, we we're, uh, you know, we've got to get the ball and have a little bit of composure about how we do things. And uh, a couple of times, you know, we've held on to it. It hasn't been too bad, but then we just give it back to them. It just seems that the closer you can keep it, aside from the scrum, which is having a few problems, the better it is. They had so much trouble from deep. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, that's one thing that we've said. You know, we've got to either kick the body thing out or, or contest for it. So, um, you know, we'll see what happens this half. Good on you. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Cheers, mate. Cheers, mate. Well, one thing that Canada did have plenty of in the first half was territory, 76% of it. Um, you could argue they had the wind, so it'll be interesting to see whether the All Blacks can turn that around in the second half. Yeah, I think the message for the All Black coaching staff at half-time will be don't loosen up too much, guys. You know, like what you've done, not happy conceding a try, but just make sure you keep the simple patterns of our game plan together. Don't get too loose. Don't look too many changes. We'll check that with Ian Smith when he uh, gets settled. And Romain Poit gets this second half underway at the Wellington Regional Stadium. 
Kickoff claimed by Aaron Carpenter for Canada. Fairhurst swings it wide. And a kick under some duress is made. Muli Aina knocked it on as he came sliding in to grab it. Red board. Well, no changes uh, as yet to the sides that left the field, bearing in mind, of course, that they did lose Van der Merwe. Uh, the Canadians uh, towards the latter stages of the second half and Sean White was on in 21. The interesting for me, Grant Fox, just to see the involvement of Puri Wepu in the second half as well. At what point? Yeah, the All Blacks tend to change their halfback at around the sort of 55 or 60 minute mark. So we'll watch for that. Or will he go to the number 10 position? Well, he's covered for 10, isn't he, in the makeup of this side with Alice at nine, uh, covering nine. A little bit of light rain falling here, too. Driving in as uh, the kick is made by Matt Evans. Oh, he's well and truly overdone that. That's gone a couple of metres over the sideline from Matt Evans. And so the All Blacks have a line out way down near the 22 metre line. Yeah, what would be best in my view for the All Blacks? There's Pity Wepu there. If the All Blacks think Slade is the guy who is going to carry on in the number 10 position, then I'd love to sit, have him see the 80 minutes out. Four throws. Whitelock stretches and now Cowan waits. Oh, a lob pass, not a very good one either. And all Canadians onto this, and they've got an opportunity. Can Trainor get a second one? He's leading the charge, and did he get it down? He wants to have a look, but the Canadians are celebrating. The second question. No complaint from Mills Muliaina. He was the last defender standing right over the top of it. Uh, I think you did right, Ian Smith. No problem here at all for Trainer. Yep, absolutely no problem. And that was from a shocking Come pass on, there is no reason from you Jimmy Cowan. The try. No reason I want to try. Yes. Time on. Well, Canada strike first. Well, so, no Canadian player has ever scored 10 points in a match against the All Blacks, so Connor Trainer is going to remember this one. Oh, Andrew Hall, All Black captain, or All Black captain. I'm sure he gave his side a bit of a rack up. Not the start they were looking for, but just the start Canada would have wanted. And a Munro, who kicked an early penalty to give Canada the lead. Looking to convert. And he's done it well. Munro converts the trainer try. 37 points to 15. So, yeah, that pass went right over the head of Guildford. And Colin Slade. Too much speed by Trainer. Slade kicks off. Just a short one, too. And well taken by Chauncey O'Toole for the Canadians. Fairhurst, Munro, slipped it away to Fairhurst again. And he is well and truly held. Two tries now, Canada. Another little kick attempted to go in behind Dag Fielding. Muli Aina, good depth in this attack as Slade sends it off to Guilford. Went head on by Ryan Smith. And Cowan. Again, a high one for Slade. Now Kano. Here's Williams looking to offload. That's so beautifully to Conrad Smith. And Jimmy Cowan should get in under the bar. Oh, he'll be happy, Jimmy Cowan, in his 50th test to get his seventh try in test matches. It makes up for the one he essentially gave to Canada on his own. This pass was a bit high, too. Pulled in by Slade. Watch Sonny Bill Williams here. Carrying a one-hand, drew two defenders in. Great line, Conrad Smith, back on the angle. 
and he ran Cowan in, who just had enough speed to get there. Well, had uh, amazing numbers, the All Black, on that back line, back line move because they uh, had Conrad Smith coming in from deep and wide, and they had Israel Dag outside him, so they had so many options that Canada had to defend, and that's where the All Blacks have been dangerous from, from deep. It was a poor kick from uh, the first 5'8". Munro just gifted it to Dag. There's the conversion for uh, the All Blacks as well. Just what Kieran Crowley didn't want, conceding possession in a soft way. Well, what the All Blacks would have wanted, though, Ian, is to hit back straight away. And as far as they're concerned, they won't want to concede any more points at all to Canada. One would be too many in their book. They've now given away two. But Canada, naturally enough, they'll be happy. Munro kicks off. Whitelock gets under it, oh, off the shoulder. And so the All Blacks make a hash of that. Fairhurst away for Smith. This time Munro running outside Smith. Good tackle by Conrad Smith. And Canada still in possession. Fairhurst using this wide wipers kick quite regularly and Carpenter field it quickly. And there's a forward pass in there. And forward thrown by forward. Captain Pat Reardon. So just have a look at here's the pass by Jimmy Cowan that went way over Guilford's head down in front of Slade and behind him and away Connor trainer went. What's up, Corps? Yes. A couple of mistakes early Crunch. from the All Blacks. Coaching staff won't be happy with that. Touch. Pause. Engage. Reed holding. Now Cowan. Off the Slade. Hovering in there was Dag. Lays it back. Cowan. Well, again, it's a dreadful pass. Might have had his hand hit as he delivered that. In fact, he's very slow to get back. And that's, in fact, Israel Dan, I think, who's struggling a bit. All Blacks throwing some really Seven loose passes side. here. Jimmy Cowan standing you up too quickly. The and that's you not the, the sight the All Black coaching staff will want to see. Israel Dag limping. I'm betting he gets dragged pretty quickly. Just with the All Black doctor, Deb Robinson, at the moment. I say Toyava is in the reserves today. They won't be wanting to take too many risks. And it looks like a change coming for Canada anyway. They're going to change at hooker, Canada. So uh, Ryan Hamilton uh, is on for the skipper, Pat Reardon. This is a move they've done before in the World Cup. And the All Blacks, as you say, wasting no time. Dag is gone. Toyava on in 22. Very quick change. They realise how valuable Israel Dag will be as this tournament progresses. Another loose pass. It's been a bad five minutes for passing as Conrad Smith takes it. Now it's snapped up by Reed and the All Blacks in Canada's territory. Here's the skipper, Andrew Hoare. There's nothing through the middle. Now Cowan wants it. Muli Aina. Here's Toeyaba getting an early touch. Finding Muliaina with a nice offload. Players lining up, but he had to hang on to it as they overran him. Now Slade into midfield for Vito. Here is Williams, that's Sonny Bill. In centre field. Now Slade back on the inside for Vito, who's got through plenty of work in this game. Ball turned over, though. And away comes uh, Hubert Bidens for the Canadians. Off it goes to Phil McKenzie. Fairhurst. Munro. Across to the try scorer, Trainer. And the ball lost. And so Vito tidies up. He'll play advantage here. Referee Plight. Conrad Smith. For Slade. And Reed. Referee's got the arm out here. And Slade. Clean break from Slade, but. The ball drops loose in the tackle from McKenzie. Forward breakfast, right afterwards. From red the danger here for the All Blacks is getting loose, and that leads to mistakes. Perhaps the All Blacks are looking to inject 
More players into the game, Ian Smith. Well, they're looking to get Tori Wepu on, and uh, Reuters are also looking to get uh, Anthony Boric on as well. So just have a look at Israel Dag landing on that, that troublesome right hip area. It was uh, like a big dead leg that uh, was the problem after the game against France. Colin Slade might be just uh, limping a tad as well, so that is the, the most scary factor.